Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere. Blog Talk Radio. Well, good evening, folks, and thank you for tuning in with me once again to another edition of True Conservative Radio, and of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost, and once again, folks, I want to thank you for tuning in with me. I want to first start off by saying I apologize for such the long layoff. I had a lot of emails, and I got a lot of concern about my absence since the last program, and I wanted to reassure everybody because I have uh, disclosed certain elements of my health here. I want to assure everybody that I'm alive and well, still kicking. I just took a vacation. You know, it's summertime, and... You know, usually I use that as an opportunity to go and uh, travel or uh, uh, go to places that would uh, otherwise non, uh, not be possible in other parts of the year. And uh, <clears throat> I took a trip to Vegas for the 4th of July weekend, for heaven's sake. And we're going to talk about that later on in the program, but, you know, since I've been gone, a lot of things have transpired, especially in the current events sector of America, and one in particularly, and, and you just can't imagine how many morons have emailed me time in, time out, asking me about, oh, my God, what do you think about Michael Jackson? What do you think about the death of Michael Jackson? I don't give two rats asses about the death of Michael Jackson. And I can't believe the amount of pussy pampering that this stupid, ridiculous, alleged Woody Allen butt-loving pedophile it's getting on the boob tube out here. I mean, every time I flip on the television set, there's got to be some commemorative pro- program, some inside news story, some kind of ridiculous nonsense about this Michael Jackson. Now, I want to reassure the folks that I am going to get into that, and I'm going to get into that in just one second. But I can't believe how many emails, folks, and I just wish I could show you, but I don't think I can take as many screenshots how I have emails, for heaven's sake, because there's just too many of them. There's just too damn many of them. But they wanted to know what I felt about Michael Jackson, so we're going to talk about that right now. Now, the first thing I want to say about Michael Jackson is that I think that this is a man that proves, if anything, if there's any kind of positive that you could spin on this freak, would be the fact that this is the purest form or the purest example of the American dream, or what used to be the American dream. When there was opportunities for everyone out here, before we saw this implementation of quasi-communism out here. <sighs> I'm sorry, folks, i got to take a deep breath here, because I can't believe I'm talking about some, uh, you know, half pork face. Uh, half white woman looking piece of think he have Villalago piece of uh, a plastic surgery obsessive piece of crap like Michael Jackson. I know this is a true conservative radio show, but I feel that I would be letting a lot of people down out here who send me these emails who want to know my opinion. So we're going to try to get this done as quick as possible about this piece of crap. Uh, but first and foremost, folks. I think this whole issue of of star humping, because that's what it is, folks. I mean, let's call it for what it is. It's star humping. It's people with absolutely no lives out here, no personality, no originality, out here trying to grab for a star and say, oh, look at me, I'm going to put on a little beaded jacket, do a little move with my hand, grab my midsection, and go, oh, I'm not joking. 
But this is America, right, folks? Huh? This is the America. We are witnessing the systematic transition, like I've said over and over again. We're seeing the damn systematic transition of America into quasi-communism. And you American people want to talk about Michael freaking Jackson. Some idiot who bought the elephant man's bones, from what I understand. I don't know if it's true or not. Who the hell knows what it's true? I heard this idiot bought an oxygen chamber. He used to play with chimps. All right, I mean, he, he bought himself a damn carnival to live in, for heaven's sake. This idiot was actually conducting an interview in a tree. He was conducting a freaking interview, climbing a tree, and he actually looked perplexed at the interviewer and said, Um, you don't climb trees? Uh, no, we don't climb trees, Michael, because we're not worth a half a billion dollars because you could do a little moonwalk and grab your crotch every five freaking seconds. Now, I give no pity to Michael Jackson, all right? I don't care what happened to this piece of crap. He's a piece of trash in my view, and you know what? I don't care. And you know, all you people that are going to be like, oh, but he was such an American icon. You know? Oh, he was just, he was a tortured soul, and, and you got to give him a break. I mean, you know, so what if he tickled a couple of child's asses, allegedly? It, it doesn't matter. He, he did the moonwalk. Yay, he did the moonwalk. Shut your ass. I think it's a disgrace. I'm a conservative, damn it. Do you understand that? I'm not going to sit here and, 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 and put this imbecile on a pedestal. You know, putting this idiot on a pedestal and giving him all the airtime that we have given him is the equivalent of the damn octo whore, octo mom, or whatever that bimbo's name is. That's the equivalent. So did did I sit here and you know stay home and not do anything and? You know, just bundle up in my little bed and my covers and, you know, hug myself a damn pillow because Michael freaking Jackson bit the farm or bought the farm? No! I didn't care, okay? <laughs> I didn't care because that, that's not going to get my bills paid, and I sure as hell know it's not going to get your bills paid. It's not going to bring your constitutional republic back. It's not going to, you know, uh, make things the way it used to be. It's not going to be that way at all. So that's why I don't give a crap about Michael Jackson. And you know what makes me even sicker before we get off this Michael Jackson kick? Because I'd literally like to moonwalk over his grave and spit on it, if you want my personal opinion. I don't care who likes that or not. But the bottom line is the, the most disgusting part about it is you had this ridiculous spectacle in Los Angeles, California, out here. I don't know if you idiots watched it. It was televised by every freaking network out here. This ridiculous spectacle. I mean, you would have thought the damn, uh, you know, uh, Queen of England had just croaked or something. I mean, they shut down Los Angeles. I mean, they, they had the Staples Center set aside for this stupid moron and this ridiculous circus sideshow of a family. I mean, you have to understand, folks, this is the same state, California who can't even pay for itself. They are issuing IOUs to state employees that the banks, according to Day, they are not going to issue, they're not going to take them. They're not going to take the IOUs issued by that California government out there. And this is the most liberal state in the union. Uh, you know, you have to think about this, folks. All right? And yet they had enough money to come up with some sort of a ridiculous spectacle for this pork face Michael Jackson. They had enough money to, what was it, $2.5, $3 million? I mean, who the hell knows? They had enough money to pay for this crap, and yet they don't have enough money to pay for their own damn employees. Don't you think there's something wrong with that picture? But no, people will say, no, I think Michael Jackson deserves it, baby. Beat it. Just beat it. Ridiculous. I'm going to end with this Michael Jackson crap. By saying that, you know what, who cares if Michael Jackson died? Who gives a crap? All right? Are they going to make a big spectacle like this when you bought the bucket, huh? huh? Are, 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 are they going to make a big spectacle like this when they put you as warm food down there? No. Huh? Do they make a big deal about, you know, your loved ones, if you happen to have a mother or a father, a spouse, a child, God forbid, uh, you know, when they put them 
uh, you know, into the ground, when they passed on, did they make a big spectacle about it? No. You know, the only people that really cared was the family. And that's what I keep telling people. That's what I keep telling people to, to, to focus on, to, to, to bear with is the family. So screw Michael Jackson, all right? Anyway, folks, if you have an opinion, you want to hear something, you want to say something, 646-652-4869. We're having uh, technical difficulties with this stupid, ridiculous chat room once again. And I'm sorry if uh, you're getting bounced in and out of the chat room. I want you to bear with the program. We're going to have ourselves a great program this evening. Now, um, I wanted to also talk about uh, the Steve McNair incident and the Arturo Gatti incident. Uh, these are two athletes who, you know, were pretty, uh, you know, pretty good athletes in the sports of their, uh, the, the, the sports of their profession. I mean, you know, you had Arturo Gatti was probably one of the greatest boxers, one of the greatest comeback kids in boxing history. And if, uh, you have the opportunity, folks, I strongly advise you to look at the fights of Arturo Gatti and look at how this man would literally have his face looking like hamburger. I mean, you know, he'd have both of his eyes swolled shut. And, you know, you would think that this uh, this idiot would finally go out for the count, but he didn't. He would come back and kick the crap out of whoever was uh, sitting there and who was his opponent. It was a great fighter, and I think it was a great loss, and it's a horrible tragedy the way that Arturo Gatti and uh, and, and, and Steve McNair uh, went out, and uh, that those horrific events happened. During my time off, and I want to give myself a little bit of opinion, or time to give myself an opinion here on the show about what I believe happened, and this epidemic of you know wealthy, well-off individuals getting uh, basically getting killed by you know obsessive, uh, materialistic uh, women. Now, folks, it's no coincidence that uh, the, the the women that killed these two, uh, I'd like to call them uh, sports icons, because, uh, uh, you know, McNair was a pretty tough guy if you happen to be following the NFL. I mean, he was a pretty tough son of a bitch out there. He would go out there hurt. Uh, he would take the sacks. He would go out there and run for, uh, uh, for touchdowns. He was a pretty tough guy. And same with Arturo Gatti. I mean, he was, these were two tough guys here. And they did what they had to do to make a living. Uh, you know, one obviously had to go and do the boxing route. The other one did the uh, football route. They accumulated all their monies and uh, put it all together. And now when they were tired, they wanted to uh, reap the rewards of all their work. And now, folks, I don't want to make a comment that's going to hurt people. But, folks, you know, you better get ready. You know, fasten your damn seatbelts. Uh, because the bottom line is, folks, is that it is no coincidence that these women are, are 20-somethings, all right? And let's be frank about it, folks. You know, Steve McNair, uh, I don't know the situation with him and his family. Allegedly, they were, you know, filing for divorce, or I don't know what the case was. So I'm not even going to comment on it. Uh, but you, you, you sit here, and you know, he's out here trying to, I guess, I mean, I'm not trying to make assumptions of the man because he only knows why he started a relationship with this woman who ended up uh, uh, leading to his demise. Uh, whether it was a physical thing, whether it, you know he genuinely had some sort of a spiritual connection or emotional connection to a 20-year-old, I don't know. But uh, from the reports I've read, he, he showered her with gifts. You know, I mean, you know, what have I always said on this program? <laughs> I mean, you want a woman, the only thing you have to do is come up with a couple of Benjamins or a shiny uh, gold or diamond-ridden object, and before you know it, you got about four or five women pulling the freaking balls out of your pants. And I'm not joking. So he starts showering her with gifts. Allegedly, he uh, bought her a Escalade. He took her to trips to Vegas, took her to trips to New York and Miami Beach and, and all this crap. And... Uh, you know, once that came to an end, or uh, the threat of that came to an end, because, I mean, I don't know if these people were at the places of their demise because they were discussing their relationship. I mean, one would tend to believe that that's why they both 
are dead at this point because, you know, some time along that particular area there, they were discussing their damn relationship. And, of course, this woman said, I, I, you know, she's an Iranian immigrant or some crap. I don't know, some, some, one of them idiots out there. She's like, I cannot live without the, the money. I, I need the money. Uh, you, you know, this just goes to show you, folks, that woman liberation is nothing more than subliminal prostitution. And these women have no souls anymore. They have no soul. They're willing to kill themselves or kill their spouse because they can no longer attain the materialistic benefits of being with that person. And, folks, I, I'm going to make that assumption when it comes to the Steve McNair case. In my view, and this is my opinion, I think that this stupid, ditzy Iranian broad out here got a little obsessive with McNair. I mean, you know, because she is a little young, got a little infatuated. McNair kind of... Probably uh, was a little intimate with this young lady, and he uh, bought her a bunch of crap, and he wanted to end it. You know, he wanted to basically, uh, or, or she wanted, who the hell knows who wanted to end it. I'm not going to make any assumptions, because I don't know. But lo and behold, both of them are dead, and it's come out that, uh, you know, she shot him while this poor guy was sleeping, and you know, she shot herself. And then we got the Arturo Gatti incident, where, you know, 23-year-old bimbo, uh, for whatever reason, uh, decided to, you know, uh, I, the reports have, that I've read, that you hit him with something over the head, then strangled him with a damn purse string or purse shoulder strap. Now, what would motivate these women to do that? Well, obviously, in my opinion, the reason they did it was because that materialistic gravy train was going to stop, all right? That materialistic gravy train was just going to stop there, and they couldn't take it. And lo and behold, they go into these neurotic, uh, you know, emotional-ridden episodes, and they don't know what to do, and lo and behold, this is the kind of garbage you have. I mean, why do you think, folks, I've been on this air for two years, why do you think I always predict when, and we do this about May or April every year, I predict that women are going to, quote-unquote, accidentally leave their children in a car in 100-degree weather out here. Why do I always say that, and why do we always hear about it every summer? Well, folks, because that's the way it is. Do you understand that? I mean, this is just, it, it's a sick mentality. I mean, you, have you ever heard of this uh, Munchausen's by proxy syndrome? Uh, you know, and for those of you that aren't really aware of all this garbage, you know, I'm sorry to throw all these big words at you. I'm sorry to sit here and, you know, kind of throw all this terminology, but this is real out here. Munchausen's by proxy syndrome, basically, from what I understand, it's over 98% women, you know, that, it, that this affects, conveniently enough. These are individuals who go out and they purposely harm either their children or they harm, you know, somebody in their family to attain sympathy from those around them. I swear to God... That's Munchausen's by proxy. This is a freaking diagnosis. I mean, this is an actual justification for murder out here, all right? This Munchausen's by proxy, I think it's a bunch of crap, all right? Now, folks, this is why I was saying that we need to start understanding what is the culprit behind this social cesspool. What's the culprit? behind this idea of, you know, women just reducing themselves, willingly re reducing themselves to subliminal prostitutes. And why do I say that? Well, because just take a look at their role models out here. Lindsay Muff Diving Lohan. Huh? Look at Britney Spears and Beyonce Knowles. What do they say time and time again? Oh, this ass could be yours if the price is right. I mean, this is the new feminist America, and it needs to be stopped. You know, it needs to be stopped in its tracks. Now, I don't mean to get it off on a tirade about, uh, you know, feminism there, but, folks, in my view, I think that the murders of these great sports athletes, these, these great gentlemen, uh, Steve McNair, Arturo Gatti, it, it all comes down to this feminist movement. All right? 
I mean, you know, look at this ridiculous epidemic out here. You know, I mean, I mean, when have you heard this? You know, this epidemic of women going out and just killing, you know, their their, their significant other. Not even their significant other. I mean, in the case of McNair, it was, you know, some broad he met at the damn pancake house that he wanted to give her a decent hump. And he got all infatuated with her, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm not condoning the man's activity. I think that it was it was despicable on his part, but the man didn't deserve to die. And same with Arturo Gatti. You know, I, you know, if you go watch Arturo Gatti's fights and just look at his, how disfigured his face would be in every fight and take a look at the culmination of what he worked for was some ditzy bimbo strangling him with a freaking purse strap. But this is America, isn't it? Eh? This is America. And I think it's sad, folks. And, you know, rest in peace. Steve McNair, Arturo Gatti, and, you know, screw you, Michael Jackson, all right? 646-652-4869 is the number to call. Anyway, folks, uh, I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, my time off. Uh, once again, I wanted to say that I went out on vacation, went out to Vegas for the 4th of July weekend, which was probably one of the – it was an interesting weekend. I shouldn't say I hated it, but, uh, it was, you know, it was eclectic, huh? Eclectic, that's a good word to, to, to describe that particular weekend in Vegas. Uh, the reason we went out there was because, uh, you know, we figured they, they'd have some pretty good, uh, uh, you know, fireworks or anything. They had no such thing. They, they didn't have no fireworks out there. All right? I mean, I thought there was going to be some, you know, some, some, some garbage, you know? But, uh, you know, the interesting part about Vegas, which I like, is that, uh, you know, you can go and you grab yourself a meal 24 hours a day, you know. Uh, you can go out and, uh, you know, participate in a, in, a, in a consumption of a beverage 24 hours a day. I mean, you've got these freaking people walking the streets with an open drink in their hand, and they're perfectly fine with it out there in Vegas. It's, you know, pretty refreshing. And you know what else is refreshing out there? is that even though I saw just droves of fanny pack, wife beater wearing pieces of American garbage, just, you know, mo just moving themselves down like a bunch of herds of sheep down the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, but but what, one thing I really did notice is that everybody was working. I mean, everybody was working. You know, I'm used to going to cities, and I, I travel often, folks. I mean, believe me, I, I travel as often as possible. Uh, but the thing that I really uh, was interesting to me was everybody was working. Everybody, you know, had a smile on their face. Everybody was making money out there. Uh, you know, I, I, I probably had the greatest service in the world. You know, I went to a, a variety of different locations out there in Vegas. And, you know, I went to uh, many different locations. And everywhere I went, it was great service. And everybody was working. I, I didn't have one person come up to me and say, uh, Mister, can I have... Can I have 50 cents? Shut your mouth. I didn't have one vagrant, one homeless idiot, one poor bastard come up to me asking me for money. You want to know why? Because they're working. And rightfully so. Anybody come up to you asking you for some money, you say, go get a job, ass clown. Now, the one thing I didn't appreciate is the the type of crap. You know, the the, the amount of just, you know, human excrement that was out there just waddling their fat asses all over Vegas. And I'm talking about the visitors in Vegas. Now, uh, you know, I saw a lot of elderly people, you know, people that are probably collecting Social Security and they're gambling away on a freaking slot machine. I saw a lot of those old bags. Uh, I saw a lot of, uh, you know, middle-aged people that are out there uh, with their fanny packs, you know, playing a slot or two. Some of them think that they're high rollers so they go to the you know, $50, $100 limit tables are out there trying to gamble, whatever they're trying to do. I, I'm not a gambling man. I mean, I like to play poker every now and then, but we're, we're going to get into that in just a second. Uh, and another thing I saw out there, and it is just predominant. There are just droves of females that are out there just dressed scantily clad. I mean, they're just like vultures. I was just scoping the scene out there. And, you know, you, one guy would hit on the roulette wheel over here, and he won himself $5,000 or some crap, and these women just, they had this radar, sonar vision or some crap. They just swarmed on them like flies to a dirty, smelly, steamy crap 
They just swarmed on him, and, you know, they, 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 they're flashing their assets. You know, they're out there whispering in his ear and the whole nine yards. It's just, it's just filthy and disgusting in that regard. I mean, but, but it reinforces the fact uh, of everything that I've been stating on this program, that, uh, you know, the modern-day female is nothing more than a subliminal prostitute. If you want to get the purest form of that or the, the, the purest example of that, go to Vegas and just stand around in a damn casino for a little bit, and you will see that when somebody hits big out there, when somebody is announced that they have won thousands of dollars and they got real lucky, you're going to see these damn bimbos coming along and trying to swarm this idiot individual. They don't even care if it's a woman. They'll go out there and, and, and try to do some muff-diving little tactics to see if they can get into her pocket. I'm telling you, folks, it's so disgusting and so sick, and you people want to point at me like I'm the bad guy, like I'm a bad guy because I want, I'm a foot soldier for the American family, like I'm a bad guy because I feel that we should shield our children from the sexual depravity and violence. I'm the bad guy because I believe that every child, every damn child should have a mother and a father to raise them up properly. But, folks, let me tell you something. You want to see the purest form of what I've been speaking of for the past two freaking years? You go out to Vegas and just scope around a damn casino and look at all these idiots that happen to win and just take a look at these scantily clad women that just flock to this moron. And the poor bastard actually, he, you know, that's the bad part about this stupid crap. These idiots fall for it. They're like, oh, look at me. I'm a, I'm a high roller now. I won ten grand. I'm a high roller. Oh, look at me. They're stupid. And then they wonder why they're end up broke with the sh- without the shirt on their backs. Anyway, uh, not not to get off keister here, but uh, the thing I did like about Vegas, folks, is uh, not only the freedom of uh, you know being able to go out and have a drink, uh, being able to go out and eat 24 hours a day. It's, it's literally the city that never sleeps. Uh, I like the fact that there was no vagrants, no idiots out there with their hands out begging for food or nothing like that. Everybody was working. Everybody was hustling. Even people, you had illegal immigrants, uh, you know, passing out flyers on the street out there, and they couldn't even speak English, stupid immigrants. So they, they, they flapped the flyers against each other like a little clicking sound. And if you happen to just cruise your ass down on the strip, that's all you'll hear is this. this let me see if I can, if I, if I can emulate this crap. It's like... That's what it sounds like all the way down the strip. Now, the only problem I have with that is that you've got these illegal immigrants taking jobs from America. And let me tell you something, folks. You want to take a look at illegal immigrants, you know, taking control. Go to Vegas and take a look at how many dealers out there that can barely speak freaking English out here. All right? I mean, in some casinos, I felt like if I knew how to speak Chinese or you know, uh, Taiwanese or some crap that, uh, you know, I'd be in bed with these idiots, you know? Uh, but anyway, while I was down there, folks, uh, I didn't do much gambling, but I did play some poker. And I love poker, folks. It's a, you know, I'm from Texas, so you know I love that Texas Hold'em. And uh, I played, uh, you know, a couple of games out there. I, I you know, went into a $1,000 cash game and, and, and won great because I'm a pretty good Texas Hold'em player. I'm from Texas, for heaven's sake. Uh, you know, went out here and played a tournament at one of these, uh, the Treasure Island or one of them uh, casinos out there, one big out there. So had a pretty good little time out there in Vegas, given the fact that uh, I'm not really for uh, a gambling. I, you know, they've been trying to push gambling out here in Texas, and I've nev- never necessarily been against it, but uh, I'm not necessarily for it either. But uh, given the fact that I experienced Vegas out there, and saw that I, I didn't see anybody fighting, given the fact that everybody was drunk off their ass. Uh, I didn't see anybody, you know, getting any kind of ruckus. Uh, you know, everybody's pretty much under surveillance. Everybody's pretty much under the, uh, the eye of the camera out there. So, I mean, it was fairly secure at any point in time you wanted to go out and have yourself a, a walk on the strip or go to another casino or anything of that nature. Uh, so I give I give Vegas a lot of props. I have to admit, I, I, I mean, I don't like the fact that you got a bunch of degenerates out there uh, blowing their entitlements, and we're going to get to that in just a second, uh, on slot machines. I, I don't like the fact that, uh, you know, you got casinos blatantly ripping off people with the odds of some of these games that they're trying to, uh, you know, shove down our throats. Um, but uh, let me tell you something. Uh, <clears throat> what I saw out there also, 
I saw a lot of pregnant women. Now, let me let me reemphasize this again. I saw a lot of pregnant women that aren't they they, they weren't uh, locals. I mean, these were pregnant women, women with strollers, uh, you know, that were visitors in the town of Vegas. Now, you know, once again, folks, I ask you, how can single mothers and women that are pregnant and all this garbage have the money to afford a trip to Vegas? Well, folks, it's what I've been always telling you, all right? We have made baby making in, we've turned it into big business. And now if a woman shits out about six or seven kids, they get about four to $5,000 in government subsidies, and they go and play the child support lottery, and lo and behold, they're taking trips to Vegas. Huh? And if they can't find a babysitter, I'm telling you folks, just count how many goddamn strollers there are out there. You are going to see. You are going to see you know, this disgusting sight. And it is disgusting, folks. Let me tell you something. It is one of the most disgusting, grotesque sights that I've ever seen. These women out here with their children, right there by the slot machine out here. You got know, you know, the kid in a damn stroller, for heaven's sake, trying to rock them back and forth. It's disgusting. But this is America, isn't it, huh? This is the America that everybody wanted. This is the, uh, the America, you know, everybody wanted to ask, kiss, and wanted to, oh, I want the Obama America. I want change. But uh, anyway, uh, all else aside, I thought Vegas was a pretty good place. I'm definitely going to visit there again. Very safe, folks, and it's very American outside the fact that we got ourselves a bunch of illegals trying to pass out flyers on the Strip. And the fact that we got a bunch of, a bunch of you know, non-English-speaking dealers out there. But other than that, great place to visit, very safe. I, I'd advise you to keep the kids, you know, at home or do, do something else because I wouldn't take any children there. I don't know why anybody would take any kind of ch- child uh, to Las Vegas. I think that's uh, just uh, that's just a hypocrisy in my view. Anyway, we're going to take some callers here. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. Uh, H62, you're on the air. Area code H62, you there? Well, it looks like they're just playing with their pecker shaft or something, all right? Uh, how about uh, Crisis X1? Are you there? Hey, hello, Crisis X1, you there? Well, you know, everybody that seems to be calling up, uh, you know, doesn't seem to be uh, doesn't seem to be uh, talking. So let me tell you something, folks. If you're going to call up here, at least have a pair, and give me a call at six four six six five two four eight six nine. Now I know they have uh, a couple of casinos out there. There's one circus casino for kids. Uh, you know, I'm being enlightened by those on the uh, in the chat room. I do know this, but. I just feel that uh, it's just not something for children to be seeing. There's a lot of uh, drunkards walking around out there. Now, granted, it's fairly safe in, in Las Vegas, and I thought it was very, uh, very nice. Now, <clears throat> given the fact that I like Texas Hold, I want to go into this whole idea of online gambling. Now, folks, I am all for uh, casino gambling as long as there is a gambling commission. And that's what makes Las Vegas so beautiful, is that there is an actual gambling commission that if you feel that you've been cheated, if you have some evidence that you've been cheated or you feel that the damn house is, you know, taking it up, you know, uh, doing something to screw you up, you can go to the gambling commission. There'll be an investigation about it. Because this is an actual way to attain revenue by the state. And, uh, you know, they can't sit here and allow a bunch of morons uh, to run rigged games that are, you know, just basically going to have no winners out here. Uh, there's got to be a, a, a decent gambling commission, some kind of oversight. And then this whole idea of online gambling. Now, when I went out there, it was the beginning of the World Series of Poker. You know, so I went out there to the Rio and checked out all the stupid poker players that you see on television. And I'm not going to name their names because I think the whole fraternity of poker is ridiculous. I mean, I remember, uh, you know, when poker players had some balls, for heaven's sake. You know, half these uh, uh, poker players that you see on TV look like they just, you know, popped out of the anal 
passage of Ricky Martin. You know, I, I mean, I don't know how you can call yourself a poker player and have a higher voice than B. Arthur. I just, you know, I, I don't understand it. But, but the point is here is that I, I went out there and, you know, I, I love poker, folks. I mean, I loved you'd sit down there when I was in Vegas. I was out there having a ball. I, order, you know, I went in a tournament. I, you know, I played some cash games out there. And every when I went into the uh, Rio to observe some of these World Series games, because there's like, a, you know, what a couple of hundred games that are happening throughout a whole span of time. And Anyway, folks, I see these stupid morons, all right, having, you know, patches on themselves, advertising online casinos, you know. Uh, and I'm not going to name the casinos because I think they're despicable, all right. But, you know, they're poker this and poker that and, and online poker room, online casino. And, folks, I want to be the first to tell you that do not go to any online casino, any of them. Uh, first and foremost, how in the blue hell can you trust a program that was programmed? You understand that the online poker room that all these morons are actually given thousands and thousands of dollars to as a legitimate gambling site, with no oversight, mind you. I mean, somebody's got to program the so-called randomness of a shuffle. Somebody's got to program the so-called randomness of an online slot machine. Somebody has got to program the so-called randomness of an online blackjack game. So, folks, I, I just can't understand how legitimate gamblers, if that's even really a <laughs> freaking term, but how these morons are out here playing on TV, you know, claiming to live in the, the great fast life of a gambler and, you know, winning all these tournaments and trying to be the best at poker. How in the blue hell do these morons legitimately advertise these online gambling sites? They're fraudulent. In my view, they are fraudulent. Now, I would strongly advise you, before you get tempted, because let me tell you, these online poker rooms are advertising all over the freaking place. I mean, they're on anywhere that they can find advertising, they do. And that's why whenever you see these damn poker tournaments on any network, you have these morons with a stupid, you know, uh, look at this, online poker this, and online poker hat, online poker shirt. Advertising some freaking scam online casino. And I think that, folks, we, something needs to be done about these damn online casinos, folks. These, I mean, there is no way that you can sit here and legitimately tell me that the algorithms that are pre programmed in all these little supposed online poker rooms, that the randomness is not as random as a damn human shuffle. You can't tell me that. And you, fo and you see, folks, they won't tell you that. If you look at the origins of most of these online poker rooms, you're going to find that they're in shoddy parts of the world. Uh, you know, they're in Indian reservations that nobody's even ever heard of. Uh, you know, they got, they're, they're offshore in, in some makeshift island somewhere that, you know, nobody knows. I mean, you, it's just really shady, this whole online poker and online gambling crap so what does that mean for you as somebody who wants to go out and participate in a poker game and there of course you know your state doesn't have any kind of legitimized gambling for any kind of poker or you know participate in that vice that we have legal in america well you are lord or you know you're susceptible and you know you want to go all right uh and go, you know, participate in something that looks so innocent like online poker. Because it is innocent, folks. I mean, when you're out there in the damn casino and pulling out the cash out your pocket, that's a tangible item there, all right? They, you are actually seeing the cash going into the cashier being cashed out for chips, and you're actually seeing the tangible item being blown at, in question. Now, out here in these online casinos, and, I, you know, I strongly advise you folks to look at the horror stories or read about the horror stories of uh, online casino gambling. It's just, it's a disgrace, you know, how these, you know, people can still stay in business without any kind of governing body or, or anybody putting these people out of business. 
All right, and I think that's what they should be. They should be out of business. All right, now, you know, you're your own country. You can do whatever the hell you want to do, but I don't think it's right that you've got people out here. And, and let me tell you, these, these poker tournaments are on legitimate networks out here. You know, they're on ESPN. They're on Fox Sports. They're on NBC. And what are these people wearing? You know, you get these stupid, dumb online poker room shirts, st- online poker room uh, you know, hats, and they, they bombard you with online poker room uh, advertising. And, folks, nobody is overseeing the online poker world or the online casino world. There is no oversight. So, folks, I strongly, if, if, you, if you disagree with anything or agree with anything, please agree with this, that we need to take a stand against these online poker and online blackjack and online whatever. The, all this online gambling crap is nothing more than a money-making racket, in my view, and we need to just take it out. We need to take it out. Now, should we make more places available, you know, that, that, that have the opportunity to gamble? Sure. I think that we should have more legalized gambling. But, you know, to sit here and have these, pokers, these poker people, you know, these people that play on the World Series of Poker and, a, and all the World Poker Tour and all this, to, to, to sit here and wear those stupid shirts and those stupid hats of these ridiculous online poker rooms only legitimizes this ridiculous programmed or pre-programmed scam. And that's why when I was out there in Vegas, folks, I was doing pretty well out there. I, let me tell you something, but I don't even want to tell you how much I won <laughs> because I was playing some pretty, uh, pretty good poker. But uh, let me tell you something. I, I decided after the trip I wanted to go and, uh, you know, take a look at some of this online poker crap because I know. Folks, I know. I'm a businessman. How in the blue hell are you going to trust some pre-programmed program to legitimize a shuffle as a, as a poker shuffle or as a poker deal? You can't. So I would like for all of you, if you don't believe me and you still want to go out and burn your money at these ridiculous online casinos, go and download their program. And just observe these little high money tables. Because let me tell you, you will be surprised how many morons are on these online casinos and they literally have, you know, $100,000 that they're playing with. I, I'm not joking, like $100,000, $200,000. And they're out here, uh, you know, just betting it away, you know, like it's legitimate. Like this is going to be a legitimate shuffle. This is going to be a legitimate, uh, you know, oversought, uh, overseen uh, uh, poker room. But it's not, folks. And that's why I'm telling you, I, I, you know, do not trust these online poker rooms. And I think that uh, if you're going to write your congressman for anything, if you're going to write your senator for anything, uh, let's let's write them about getting rid of these pieces of trash. These people pay no taxes, and they're taking money out of America. Now, why am I putting so much emphasis on this crap? Well, because, folks, we need to start figuring out ways to create jobs. We need to start figuring out ways to create economy. We need to start figuring out these things, folks. And I just took a trip to Vegas, and let me tell you, everybody out there was working. Everybody. The only people that weren't working were the freaking visitors that were over there, you know, feeding their fat asses with food and beer. But everybody out there was working. And it was a bustling place. Now, I'm not saying we should just legalize gambling all over America. I think that we should, you know, make it in, in certain, uh, po- certain geographic points so that each state can generate proper revenues from, this, uh, the, from, from these uh, Vegas-style concepts. I mean, you know, Seriously. I mean, you know, I think it's great. I saw a whole bustling, working-class uh, group of citizens out there in Las Vegas, and there was nobody coming up to me saying, Mister, can I have some money? You mean, no, no, no. Everybody was working. And these online casinos, these online poker rooms, these are foreign entities, all right? You know, and, and if they are um, happen to be owned by an American, well, they're committing treason because they are putting the online casino or the online poker room in another country, 
and they're collecting all these revenues that they're not accounting for, not paying taxes for. So meanwhile, while Obama over here is going on a spending spree and giving the damn uh, idiots that screwed up this country all the cash in their food cards and their government cheese and their damn housing, all right? I mean, it's just it's a disgrace. Why in the blue hell are these people scot free? And that's why I'm saying, you know, you you online poker rooms and you online casinos, I'm, I'm challenging you. I'm calling you out. All right, I'm calling all of you idiots out that are in the, you know, that own online casinos and own online poker rooms. Why don't you prove to everybody who's playing in your little stupid poker room for real money, mind you. These people are playing for real money, real cash. Why don't you prove to us, you know, that you're so legitimate, that there's some sort of oversight in your ridiculous scam. Why don't you why don't you prove to us? But you know what? You're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. So that's why I'm saying that you online poker rooms and you damn online casinos, you need to be taken off the damn Internet. Take them out. Take them out of the damn Internet. Because I want the money to stay here in America. All right? That's what I want. I want the money to stay right here in America. And I I just want you to just go and look at how many ridiculous uh, cards come out. You you have to be a real poker player to understand what I'm speaking of here. But you take a look at an online game and take a look at all the ridiculous, you know, almost non-statistical nonsense that happens on a consistent basis on these online, uh, you know, uh, casinos and poker rooms. It just You just have to watch it for yourself because you can observe. You can definitely observe, and, and it's just a disgrace. And these people, you know, once they, you know, get bad, they get beaten for $100,000 somehow, uh, you know, they, they go somewhere, they have their bank accounts wired to the damn online casino. I mean, who the hell knows? Lo and behold, they're re-upped another 100000 and these idiots are making all the money. They're like, look at these morons. They actually think that, uh, you know, this is a real game. <laughs> Screw online casinos, folks. I spit on them. And that goes for all you idiots, too. And let me tell you, if you happen to know a poker player, please email them this damn, uh, uh, please email them this goddamn show, okay? All those damn poker players. What you need to understand is that you are not going to sit here and play on ESPN and play on Fox and sit here and call yourself a big ball or a big badass poker player when you're advertising these despicable, disgusting, ridiculous, pathetic online poker rooms. So if you damn want to be professional gamblers, have any kind of couth or any kind of integrity, you'll stop wearing those stupid hats And you'll stop wearing those stupid, dumbass shirts advertising these pieces of crap. And that's all there is to it. I I, I mean, I don't want to go any any deeper than that. I just think that, uh, you know, Vegas was a great uh, opportunity to see uh, firsthand what an economy can happen if you legalize gambling in a certain region of uh, of America or a state for that matter. I mean, it was just, it was just unbelievable the amount of people that were working and everybody was happy. Everybody that lived there, everybody that worked there, looked happy to be working there. You want to know why? Because they're probably making more money than everybody else in the country. That's why. While everybody's out here, you know, folks, you probably have over 100 million people that screwed up their lives that are on their knees begging for another stimulus package check, waiting for another damn entitlement to come their way, waiting for Obama to pay their damn mortgage, waiting for the liberal regime to pay for everything that they screwed up. It makes me sick. Why don't you go and get out there and work like everybody else? This country was built on work, you piece of crap. This country was built on work. It wasn't built on entitlements. It wasn't built on communism. It was built on hard work. And to see my country withering away in its own ignorance 
withered away in its own stupidity. It makes me sick. That's why I come up on here and scream all the time. I want to light a fire in your ass. Do you care about this country? Do you care about your freedom? Do you care about it? No, you don't, you piece of stupid crap. Start caring about this country. Start caring about America. Because we need you, damn it. Now, I know for a fact that I am penetrating the psyche of most folks out there that are listening to me because I get a lot of positive emails. A lot of people who understand what I'm saying and what I've been saying for two freaking years. And I want to thank you for listening, and I want to thank you for understanding my true conservative commentary. Every time I do a show, even when I don't want to, even when I think it's not worth it, even when I think that no one's listening, I'm doing it for all of you that believe in true conservatism. Because I guarantee you that true conservatism will rise again. It will rise again. We can't live this social cesspool forever. Is that what you think? We can just sit here and live in this social cesspool and economically bankrupt, non-productive America forever? Huh? Is that it? Is that what you think? Do you think that we can, you know, make everything a public work and and just fund everything through the government? Is, Is that what you think? This country wasn't built on that, you piece of crap. This country was built on individualism. Screw the collective. Why don't you get that through your thick heads there, liberals? Going through the collective is going to do nothing more than create your own demise, you piece of crap. It's going to create your own demise. Anyway, folks. I'm telling you right now. I'm just, I'm just sick. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little out of breath. I'm sweating up a storm out here. I'm sweating. And the reason I'm sweating, folks, is because I can't believe it. I'm living in this freak show of a country. I mean, look at the people. Look at the freaking people out here. Just look at their scowls. Look at the, look at the imprinted frowns on most people's faces walking around already half dead. Look at them closely. Observe the furrows on their head and observe the gray hairs on their little scalp. Observe it all, folks, because let me tell you, those people, they want to blame somebody else for that. All right? They want to blame somebody else uh, for the problems that they caused for themselves. And this is the epidemic that we're seeing, and I don't see an end in sight. We've got a lot of people who screwed up their lives out here, and they want to blame everybody else for it. There is no individual responsibility whatsoever. And at this point, folks, there are so many people that screwed up their lives, we're at a point where they don't want to see anybody succeed. And that's how the liberal regime took power. The, the, you know, the, the idiots that ruined their lives with debts they couldn't pay and children they couldn't afford, they're the ones that are sitting here saying, Well, if I can't get rich, no one should get rich. And if I can't make money, no one should make money. I mean, this is the actual thought process that is being, you know, just just bombarded all over America. All right? And you people want me to show sympathy for the so-called poor in America? All the poor in America. I mean, let's think about it for a second. Let's say, okay, you're poor in America, right? Let's say you live in some subterranean crap hole, some pissing ground, some ghetto, some trailer park, some barrio, whatever. All right, let's say that you're, you know, having some bad luck, having a bad time, you're poor. Why don't you get the hell out of there, huh? I mean, you know, why don't you go to, like, a place that's bustling with economy? Why don't you go somewhere else to better yourself? Well, you, you want to know why you're not going to do it? Because you're, you're stupid. 
All right, because you know what? You want to know why you don't want to do it? Because you can. That's why you don't want to do it, because you can't. If you're really that starving, if you're really that poor, if you're really that, you know, in such distress, you would do whatever it takes to maintain sustenance. You would go out there and do whatever it took to, to attain some sort of revenue so you can somehow support yourself. But that's why the poor are poor in America. All right? I mean, you know, think about it, folks. I was just in Las Vegas. And, you know, the most expensive part about Las Vegas, folks, is getting there. Because uh, the rooms are fairly inexpensive. I mean, I read, uh, you know, Binion's Casino, uh, you know, renting out rooms for $15 a night out there. I mean, of course, the, the prices raise when, you know, the supply and demand factor goes into effect. But you got to think, all the jobs that are out there, and you can work in anything. You can work in the damn service industry and make a pretty good uh, chunk of change out there. You know, if, if you're a freaking little hoary cocktail waitress or somebody who serves food, uh, somebody who's a dealer, a pit boss, whatever. You can be whatever in the blue hell you want out there, make some money, and you, you can live in a damn hotel for a little bit and save up your cash to the point where you can buy your own place out there. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, you got a $15 room. This is what, that's why these immigrants are out there, folks. That's why they're out there passing out flyers, and they're able to do it for $50, $60 a day. Because, uh, you know, all you got to do is do this crap, $50, $60 uh, a day. You go with the Binions. You stay there for $15 a night. You got free cable, free uh, you know, electricity, you know, free water, free shower. I mean, it's just, I mean, why are people poor in America? I mean, it's just, it's a disgrace, folks. It really is. I mean, go shine shoes. Go, you know, go sell roses. I mean, do whatever it takes. But the reason that they're not doing it, because they don't want to, because they can, folks. Because they freaking can Uh, anyway, uh, I'm not really too enthused about continuing on the show because, you know, it just goes without saying. You know, all the crap that I've said thus far, it goes without saying. But you people want this this communism. You you people want this this idea of feminist and liberalism just just bombarding your brains, and you, you know you want to eat it in your Cheerios, and you know you want Toucan Sam to. You know, put a large foreign object up your anal passage or something. I, I don't know what America is doing. But it's just hard to continue the, the fire and the fury, uh, you know, to tell people, hey, we got to change this country. Because, folks, we've been on here for two years. And I, I don't see one bit of difference. As a matter of fact, it's gotten completely worse. So, folks, look, I, I will assure you this, that I will continue to do broadcasts on a more frequent basis. Uh, but I, I'm just going to do them, uh, you know, on my particular basis. Because everybody out here is pretty much an unappreciative piece of crap. And everybody out here uh, is more worried about themselves than worried about their damn country. They're more worried about how much entitlements that they can get. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and cut the show short here. I may do another one tomorrow if I'm a little bit more spirited, or maybe not. You know, who the hell knows? I don't owe you people nothing! I've been sitting here for two years, two freaking years, telling you people that all this crap was going to happen. Look in the damn archive, you sorry piece of crap! Now, folks, for most of you listening in live right now, the on-air broadcast is going to cut off. But I'm going to do some after-show speaking because I don't. Want, I just want to cut the live broadcast off. All right. I'm sick of doing live broadcasts and seeing a bunch of bedwetted, long-haired liberals sitting here flapping their fat Dorito state fingers on the keyboard, trying to be critical of me without saying the truth. When I want America to come back again! So, 
for all you folks that are listening in to the live broadcast and you want to continue listening in, we'll call up right now, 646-652-4869. So you can listen in live because I'm cutting the live broadcast short. And the reason I'm cutting it short, folks, is because my biggest audience is in the archive. And I want to thank all you folks in the archive who continue to download by the thousands. I do this for you. I do it all for you. And those are the people that call me up, or I should say email me up on a consistent basis. These are the people that download me in their iPods and that are out here truly supporting true conservative radio. These are the people. And uh, right now we're not streaming live. All this from here on out is uh, strictly for the archive, folks. Uh, I know, folks, that uh, this show had a bunch of mumbo-jumbo. But frankly, folks, I have the steam. You know, I don't know if I have any steam left in the fire. I don't know if I have any more fury left. You know, folks, I mean, I've lived on this earth for a good amount of years. And the only way, the only way that I can sit here and continue to do these broadcasts is to know that you are out there listening. To know that you're out there actually wanting to change this country. So I call on you, all the archive people that listen to me on a consistent basis, I thank you. But you need to go out there and you need to go out to the blogs, go to the forums, go to the chat rooms, and spread true conservative radio. All right? Because I know that a lot of the people who listen into the archive, either, you know, I'm broadcasting live to later, you're probably a little intimidated to go into the chat room because, of course, we get nothing but liberal and feminist agitation. And yet they want to yank me off the air, even though they are the ones instigating all the hate. They're the ones instigating all the racism, all the sexism. It's them. But, folks, we definitely need the true conservatives that are out there that listen to this program. We need you, folks. 2010 is just around the corner. And we need to make sure that this liberal regime that's in power today feels at the the ballot box. That's right, we got to make sure they feel it at the ballot box. So if you're a true conservative, if you're a foot soldier for the American family, then you have to do what it takes to spread the true conservative word. And I'm not joking, folks. I'm not joking. You need to go out there and make the contradictions that are within ideologies like feminism, liberalism, and communism. You need to expose these contradictions. You need to put these contradictions right in the liberal and feminist face. You need to spread the word out here and make these people understand that true conservatism will rise again. And we're not going to be fooled by your liberal and feminist Hollywood. We're not going to be fooled by your me who bombards us with Muff Dive and Lindsay Lohan stories and Michael freaking Jackson. We're not going to be fooled any longer. And that's why I'm calling on you folks. I'm calling on all the true conservatives folks. Let's band together. I'm not joking. I'm calling on you. Let's band together. We need to band together, and we need to stick to the principles. We need to stick to the core ideology. And the core ideology is, folks, is conservatism or else. You better be pro-life. If not, you're endorsing the purest form of murder. You better be pro-family. And you better be against single-parent families. And, folks, if you happen to be one of these uh, single-parent families that I speak of and you're getting all butthurt about it, maybe you need to analyze your situation a little bit more closely instead of sitting here shooting the messenger. All right? 
Maybe you need to take some responsibility for your ridiculous actions by sitting here and allowing a kid to be birthed into this world without you taking the proper precautions to make it sure that that partner was worth the crap. Why don't you take some responsibility? You know, I had some moron in a chat room. And folks, you know, I go out to the chat rooms, or I go to the forums, I go to the blogs. I do whatever it takes to spread true conservative ideology, true conservative principles. And I had some moron try to sit here and argue with me that he wasn't responsible for the screw-ups of his son. I kid you not, folks. He tried to sit here and argue with me and say, um, Ghost, you know, it's not my fault that my kid became a drug addict. It's not my fault. It's your damn fault! You're a despicable father! And if the mother's not in the situation, well then obviously you impregnated some stupid, erratic, neurotic bimbo that wasn't secure with herself and decided to go on and hop on something that looked good in a leather jacket. You need to take that responsibility. You, you, you! Because I'm a conservative, damn it. I've lived the conservative lifestyle all my life. And I'm not going to sit here and rebuke that for nobody. I'm not going to sit here and do a 180 for nobody. And folks, and I'm talking to all you conservatives, this Sarah Palin crap. That's right, I'm going there, folks. I'm going right there. This Sarah Palin nonsense of this stupid Alaskan Eskimo bimbo being the new mouthpiece of the conservative movement makes me want to puke up the ham and cheese sandwich that I just had about a couple of hours ago. Because let me tell you something, folks. We cannot sit here and pallet this crap any longer. Don't you understand that? We can't pallet this crap anymore, folks. We need true conservatives out here. I mean, you, do you understand what Sarah Palin did, folks? I mean, just take a deep breath with me. I know I'm sitting here, I'm sweating up a storm, I'm, I'm furious, I'm angry. But I want you to sit back with me right now. I'm going to take a, I'm going I'm to lay down here on my couch, and I want you to analyze the situation here with me. I mean, wasn't Sarah Palin the perfect, the perfect weapon? to basically dismantle the conservative movement and make the Republican Party into nothing but shambles. I mean, did you see the Republican Party convention when McCain and Palin were out there making their stupid liberal speeches out there? Uh, that ridiculous liberal coronation they called a Republican convention? I mean, did you see that crap? People five years ago who would have shunned teenage pregnancy, who would have shunned this ridiculous... Eskimo bimbo Sarah Palin. Now they were embracing it. I mean, they were calling it a beautiful thing. Like, oh, look at Bristol Palin. She shit it out a kid out of wedlock. Oh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. I mean, are you kidding me? And yet you want this bimbo to be the mouthpiece of the Republican Party and the conservative movement? Let me tell you something from a real, true conservative right here. Sarah Palin does not speak for the conservative movement. And if you, all you YouTube ass clowns who, who keep making YouTube videos out of me, why don't you make a YouTube video out of this one and maybe that stupid Eskimo bimbo will hear it. I want everyone to understand this loud and clear. That damn Eskimo moose humping bimbo... Uh, Sarah Palin does not speak for the conservative movement. In my view, she is a liberal in, in, in conservative clothing. I mean, she's a damn liberal, for heaven's sake. I mean, look at how she ran her family. And you want me to believe that she's a conservative? I mean, she couldn't tell her ditzy, bimbo daughter to not open her legs until she's of proper age and able to attain uh, some sort of sustenance. 
No, and instead, you know, they uh, decided to, I mean, I don't know what the hell they do out there in Alaska, but it's, it's just grotesque. It's stupid. And they're actually tapping this bimbo. You, you go to the blogs, go to the forums, go to the chat rooms. You've actually got idiots actually tapping this bimbo like, oh, Sarah Palin is going to run in 2012, and it's, it's going to be so great, and, and we're going to have a great candidate. A great candidate? I mean, did you hear this stupid bimbo talk, for heaven's sake? I mean, did you hear the interview with her and that rodent? Uh, what the hell is her name? Katie Kirk? She was an idiot! And you see, what really disgusts me is that you've got conservative men out here, yeah? These so-called Republicans and conservative men that are out here, and the reason that they're supporting this stupid bimbo is because, oh, she's so hot. I mean, folks, uh, you can look back in the archive. I've actually had idiots that are supposed to... You know, big mouthpieces around the Blog Talk Radio Network around here call me up and say that exact phrase that, well, you know, if you, you, yeah, at least vote for her because she's hot. I mean, th- th- these are supposed to be conservative people. These are supposed to be Republicans. I mean, this is a dumb bimbo that, you know, in my view, I mean, just by looking at her and hearing her speak, she obviously, uh, you know, did something of a devious nature, uh, probably of a feminist nature, to get her way to the top. And we all know my views on feminism. So, I mean, it just makes me sick to my stomach that I've been saying all this crap for two years, folks. Go back in the archive. I wish I wish there was some legitimate research team that went through every damn show that I ever conducted on the Blog Talk Radio Network and just pointed out every prognostication that I just prognosticated and came to pass. I mean, you can make a whole class for this crap. I mean, I'm not joking, folks. I call this economic collapse. I call this transition into communism and socialism. I call the uh, unrest that's happening all over the world. I call all this crap. You people are acting like, oh, I can't believe it's happened. If you had any kind of common sense, you would have seen it happen in there, you stupid milky lickers. But you didn't. You didn't. And now we're in a situation where America, you know, uh, I wish I had some optimism for you folks, but I, I don't see it. I mean, we have a complete society filled with losers All right, uneducated, ignorant losers that feel that they're entitled to something. I'm entitled to this. I'm entitled to that. You know, you even got idiots that believe that that they're entitled to Social Security. I mean, that's even a bigger laugh. Social Security? Let me tell you something. I think all of you people that are sitting here expecting that Social Security check should be ashamed of yourselves. All of you people collecting the Social Security check should be ashamed of your damn selves. I mean, don't you understand that? You people are basically throwing your child into a wood chipper because you want an extra check each month so you can blow in a Vegas slot machine, for heaven's sake. Because don't you understand that your children are never going to see that Social Security check, you piece of crap. Your grandchildren and all these people that are working right now that you sold some ridiculous idea to that they had to go and debt themselves $80,000 in college debt before they even started working, and then you want them to pay for you when you left them a screwed-up world, a screwed-up social environment. I say screw you. And let me tell you, I'm, I'm an old person too, folks. I'm an old person, too, but let me tell you something. If you did not uh, attain enough uh, to suffice your retirement, then why is it the responsibility of the youth who you screwed, all right? All you baby boomers and above, you screwed these kids. And let me tell you something. I've been the first one to criticize this ridiculous, grotesque, ignorant youth that we got But by God, I cannot sit here and allow this highway robbery to happen without it having something on the record. And let me tell you something, folks. The record is is that you baby boomers and all you people that are expecting to collect Social Security, you people are doing it on the backs of your children. There's going to be more of you Nimrods collecting this Social Security communist crap 
than there are paying in. And you people are going to want to keep it going. You're going to sacrifice, you know, children that you're never going to see or your children are never going to see. You're going to sacrifice their futures just so you can have a little bit more check every month, huh? And you want me to show sympathy for that, you piece of crap? I, I show no sympathy for that, all right? I'm an old person. I put away enough money. I did what I had to do. You had enough. I mean, don't you understand? If you're old, you had 70 or 65 years to go and save for your nest egg. But no, you wanted to go out. You wanted to be a baller. Huh? You wanted to go out and have the big house and the big car. And, and you wanted to blow on a bunch of materialistic widgets. And now that you don't have enough, you want to sell out your great, 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 great grandchildren so you can have that stupid check. And you should be ashamed of yourself. If you love your children, and let me tell you, if you happen to be under the age of 40 years old, this basically hits you right in the damn tailpipe, all right? If your parents love you, if this older generation really cares, they would stop Social Security tomorrow. If they really cared about you, if they really wanted to protect you, they would stop Social Security tomorrow and allow the young people to keep their money. They would allow the young people to keep their money. Because there's no economic opportunity for these young people anymore. This is a service industry-based economy. And for all you young people that are out there listening to this, you better start realizing that. It doesn't matter if you have an $80,000 degree. Nobody cares. The whole college degree thing, it's, it's been saturated. Too many people have degrees. Everybody has a degree now. And you people are going to pay for them for the rest of your lives, thanks to the baby boomers who told you to go get a damn college education, huh? Thanks to those people, huh? Let me tell you something. I got, I'm getting, getting a lot of flack for this. I'm getting a lot of emails about this crap. But I am not going to remove my stance that I think that Social Security needs to be ended. And all you idiots that are out there saying, oh, well, I paid into it. I deserve it. I'm entitled to that money because I paid into it. No, you're not. All right? You're not entitled to diddly. All that Social Security that you are paying... You were paying for your parents, all right, to be, uh, you know, cushioned with that little entitlement, all right? You were paying for your parents, all right? So tough titty, all right, all you baby boomers that are out here in the 60s burning your bras and dropping acid and going out here to Woodstock, and in the 70s you decided to wear your stupid bell bottoms and go out there and sniff cocaine off of women's asses, and then in the 80s you wanted to sell out and wear your stupid suit and tie, and now in the 90s, you were trying to rekindle some sort of crap you had in the 70s, and now you want these children to take care of you? I'm not going to let that. I'm not going to let that go quietly. All right. I'm not going to let that blatant hypocrisy go unturned, folks. And if you're a young person, you better question all these old people. You better question them all, and you better demand that your Social Security be not taxed. That you don't want to be taxed for Social Security. That you don't want to pay for this ridiculous, irresponsible generation that left you a pile of beans. That you don't want to do it, and you need to read into this. You young people are getting screwed. You young people are getting screwed. Don't you understand that? Wake up out of your stupid Paris Hilton realities. Wake up out of your MTV-ridden minds. Wake the hell up! <laughs> Wake up! Wake the hell up! You're being screwed, young people! Don't you understand that? You're being screwed! If you happen to be one of these young people that did everything the right way, you went to college, you went to school, you didn't have any children that you couldn't afford, you didn't put yourselves in debt you couldn't pay for, you're the one getting screwed now. You're the one getting taxed to death. You're the one being penalized because you did the right thing. You're being penalized by these ridiculous baby boomers and, and so forth, by the Social Security. You're being screwed by this ridiculous so-called Medicare program. You're being screwed by having your taxes pay for these losers that screwed up their lives. And the sooner you idiots realize that, the sooner we can get out of this damn 
transition into quasi-communism. And I'm not joking, folks. It's about the ballot box. Get that through your head. It's about the ballot box. We got to go out there and prove that we got the numbers. Because we do, damn it. Deep down in every American, even if they are sold by this ridiculous garbage that this liberal regime promised them of houses in the sky, paid mortgages, and a Cadillac in every driveway, they understand what I'm talking about. They understand about the lack of morality in America. They understand about 10-year-old girls being impregnated like it's a normal thing. They understand when I say that single-parent families are the majority of the day, and it's a wrong thing. Deep down, they understand this. And we need to vote on it, folks. 2010 is coming around the corner. 2012, I don't know who's going to run for the presidency. I don't know who can save us, folks, but it ain't Sarah freaking Palin, all right? It's not that dumb, stupid Alaskan bimbo, Sarah Palin, so get that out of your heads. We need to take, a, we need to take over our communities, ballot box by ballot box, folks. And I'm talking about your cities. I'm talking about your counties. I'm talking about your states. We need to start taking it over because this is a country made for the people and by the people. And the people can no longer fall asleep at the wheel, so I am calling on you. You need to do something. You can be the inspiration that sparks the synapses of the masses out here. You. Pay it forward. And I'm not joking, folks. I speak from the heart. When I say this, I speak from the damn heart. Anyway, folks, I've been going off here, but to be completely honest with you, I've been going off uh, in the archive. So if you happen to be listening, I see a lot of people here on the line here listening to me uh, live, believe it or not. They're calling in to the, uh, the guest call-in number. And they're listening to me live uh, because, folks, a lot of this stuff that I'm saying has to be said. It has to be said, but nobody wants to say it. Nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody wants to just kind of back away from it like, oh, it's no big deal. It's a great big deal. You understand that? It's a humongous deal. And, folks, that's why I get so passionate out here. Man, I'm sweating buckets out here, folks. I'm telling you right now. But you want to know something, folks? I don't care if I keel over right now. I don't care if I have a damn heart attack right now, you know? I mean, it hurts. I mean, it legitimately hurts to wake up every single freaking morning and seeing these people with their sour scowls on their faces and pointing at everybody else for their own misfortunes when they need to point at nobody else but themselves. I mean, this is what I'm talking about, folks. But you people want to live in another world, huh? You want to listen to stupid idiot bimbos that call themselves Republicans like Media Lizzie out here, and you want to listen to this stupid airheaded bimbo and say, oh, well, you know what, I kind of agree with her, so I guess I'm a Republican, I guess I'm a conservative. Meh, meh, meh. Disgrace. Utter uh, pathetic disgrace. And let me tell you, for you folks in the archive, I, I'm calling on you folks, please. All right? This is America. I want it to continue to be America. I want the land of opportunity to continue to prosper for everyone out here. All right? But, folks, you have to look at the realism of the situation. And the realism is, is we got a lot of losers in America today. A lot of freaking losers, and that's going to be tough to combat. That's going to be a tough thing to uh, to get over, is to sit here and attempt to get over the idea that there are just so many losers in society, and they got everybody else to point at except their own selves. You know, they want to blame somebody else for all the kids that they had. They want to blame somebody else. I mean, can you believe this, epi- this this idea of predatory lending? 
Uh, predatory lending. How about predatory borrowing? How about that? I mean, somebody actually has, uh, you know, whatever it is, resources or the ability to loan you some money. And you're going to get pissed at them because they loaned you the money? <clears throat> I mean, this is the kind of society that we're living in in today's America, folks. We're actually blaming people that lent these people the money to give them the opportunities to live lives they would have never have otherwise lived. And we're actually blaming the people that lent the money instead of the people that borrowed the money. I mean, it's just a disgrace. You know, I mean, this is how ungrateful America is out here. You know, these people talk about the poor in America. I talk about, you know, how inexpensive it is to rent a hotel room out there in Vegas. Uh, you know, the Binions I saw as low as $15. And I'm telling you that these immigrants, they go out there, they, they you know, pass out flyers for 10 hours a day in the hot damn sun. They do it for $50, $60. And these people are living lavish out there in the hotel rooms, folks. I kid you not. Go out there and check it out for yourself. And, and, and I'll tell you right now, if I, w I wish I spoke these people's language, but I bet you if I asked them, uh, what do you think about the poor in America, uh, they'd laugh their asses off. They'd laugh their freaking illegal alien asses off and be like, oh, they're poor in America, fuck them. Sorry to use uh, French there, but that's what they would say. And you want to know why they would say that, folks? Because they're working. All right, they understand how this world works, all right? They're working for heaven's sake. What American people don't want to do anymore. <laughs> it's sad. It's really sad, folks. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this broadcast, uh, but I want everybody to please... Uh, Bookmark the website, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Uh, bookmark that website. And at the same time, follow me on Twitter, folks. I uh, see we have a whole bunch of fans on Twitter. I want to thank you for adding me. And if you haven't added me, please add me. Ghost Politics. All right, twitter.com sl uh, slash ghost politics. All one word, no underscores. And, uh, you know, follow me on Twitter, folks, because that's the best opportunity on figuring out when I'm going to have these spontaneous broadcasts. Because, folks, I mean, you see in, in every damn show that I do the amount of energy that I exert attempting to try to relay the conservative commentary out to the masses out here. And you see the amount of agitation that I consistently get from these liberals and feminists. And the reason I get agitation is because they have no substance Remember that. Put that through your thick skulls. They have no substance. They can't justify why it's okay that single-parent families are the majority of the day. They can't justify why it's okay that 10-year-old girls should have, uh, you know, children at such a young age. They can't justify this crap. So what are they going to do? They're going to agitate. They're going to try to deviate the, the, the conversation, deviate the debate. And we can't allow that to happen anymore, folks. So if you're a true conservative, uh, please don't pallet liberal crap. Don't pallet feminist crap. If you see some stupid single mother out there with her hand out saying, oh, please, just spit on that stupid bimbo, all right? Because she is collecting entitlement after entitlement after entitlement. And if she's not collecting entitlements, well, then she's a moron because, you know, that they're – this entitlement system has made baby making into big business out here. But believe me, they, they, they know about these entitlements, folks. That's why I saw so many pregnant bimbos out there in Las Vegas. That's why I saw so many dishrag whores out there pushing two or three strollers. That's why I saw these people, because they are going to Las Vegas on our dime, on our entitlements, on our money. And you see, folks, this was America. This was never a land of handouts. It was a land of opportunity. Opportunity. Remember that concept, opportunity? Now that seems like some sort of a, you know, thing of antiquity, a word of antiquity. Opportunity, folks. Let's start with that and let's go forward. Let's start talking about opportunity. Instead of all the damn stimulus packages and handouts and food cards and, 
it's, it's disgusting. And I'm not talking about giving opportunities by creating more bureaucracy to make these makeshift job growths, these artificial job growths that we're seeing here. Uh, folks, because the government makes another bureaucracy where they need to hire a couple of thousand people does not mean that the economy is growing, morons. All right, get that through your thick skulls. Anyway, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me, whether it's in live or in the archive. Uh, please, folks, uh, before you go, if you happen to be listening to me, uh, you know, click on any of the sponsors that happen to be sponsoring True Conservative Radio. Uh, you know, click on the sponsors at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, and uh, click on some of the sponsors on my blog. I know I haven't updated it in some time, uh, but you'd be supporting True Conservative Radio greatly. Uh, you can get to the blog at uh, uh, ghostpolitics.blogspot.com, and I will be updating the blog as soon as possible, but some of the posts that I have up there are very controversial and have uh, made the rounds of the Internet forums out there, and and I think it's, uh, you know, pretty humorous to me, you know, when I see that type of crap. You know, I love to, you know, read what other people say about me. You know, that's one thing I love to do is do a damn Google search of my name. <laughs> oh, yeah, I find some ridiculous garbage. But you see, folks, when I see that crap, when I see YouTube videos trying to mock my political ideology, when I see Google uh, searches and I come up with forums of people trying to say, that I'm a hate radio personality, I find it funny. I find it funny because I have I all of a sudden become the bad guy. I've become the bad guy because I want to shield children from sexual depravity and violence. I've become the bad guy because I'm a foot soldier for the American family. I've become the bad guy because I believe that we need some sort of moral ethos in this country uh, to get ourselves out of the economic bankrupt situation that we're currently in. We need to understand that materialism is not the only thing to live for, you stupid, selfish bastards. All right, the true essence of humanity is family. But, of course, you've got these uh, godless atheists and evolutionist liberals out here trying to socially engineer the situation in America so that single-parent families are the majority of the day, and once you take the family away from humanity, what does the human have left? Well, nothing more than serfdom. All right, nothing more than submission to the state, folks. This is, clam this is classic communism right here, folks. I mean, you know, you got these idiot Alex Jones morons and the New World Order pricks and, you know, these 9-11 truther ass clowns, you know, coming up with their own hypothesis of why this is transpiring. But, you know, the bottom line is, folks, this is communism. This is communist in, uh, infiltration here. And if you're going to allow it to happen without going to the ballot box and saying something about it, well, don't bitch about it, folks. I'm trying. I've been trying for two years. Uh, I mean, I've taken a lot of crap from a lot of people from both sides. But I am not going to back down. I am not going to back down. I'm a conservative. I'm a true conservative. And I'm not going to pallet this embracing of single parents. I'm not going to, uh, you know, pallet this embracing of teen pregnancy. I'm not going to pallet this, you know, embracing of abortion. You know, one idiot in a chat room actually tried to justify this uh, abortion debate. Uh, because, you know, abortion has become a hot topic of discussion recently because of this Sante Mayor bimbo that's, uh, you know, supposed to be a Supreme Court justice or something. Uh, but he tried to say that, well, you know what, Roe v. Wade was great. You know that 150 million abortions have taken place since, uh, you know, Roe v. Wade was made in the law. And he tried to justify that that was a good thing, that, that 150 million kids being aborted out of uh, a woman's uterus was a good thing because they were going to be a dread on society. I mean... I mean, what these liberals don't understand, because I'm telling you, that's what these liberals believe, folks. They believe that abortion, eugenics, euthanasia, uh, you know, all that crap, they, they believe in all of it. That's the true agenda of all this malarkey. But you have to think, 150 million abortions, and, th and those are American people, American abortions. Take a look at what's taking their place in America. 
Take a look at all the illegal immigrants that are taking the place of aborted American souls. And I ask you this, liberals. Huh? How good is that? Huh? Is that what you wanted? I mean, it just, it, I mean, that should just prove to you that these liberals and feminists want to destroy this country. They want their Marxist state. They want this idea that that ridiculous bearded bastard wanted as the supposed perfect society. There's nothing perfect about communism, folks. It's authoritarian, it's disgusting, and it's anti-freedom. And I refuse to sit here and go quietly in that good night without taking a stand for it, damn it. And where do you stand? What part of the line do you stand on? Huh? Are you one of these mindless, imbecilic, nimrodic buffooneries out here in America that are you know, turning blinders on to the obvious communist infiltration and anesthetizing yourself with sports and television and, and filth? Or are you one of these people that sees this specter that looms over America that is communism, and you're going to actually go and do something about it. Don't just stand there. Do something about it. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for tuning in with me. Once again, I broadcast between the hours of 11.30 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. Central Texas time. I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me live or in the archive. Please spread the word about the True Conservative Radio Show. And if you have anybody that this might offend, please send it to them too, folks, because people need to get slapped back into reality. This is America, and we need to start taking care of our own instead of going out and fighting all these battles all over the international community. All right? I don't give a crap about any of these countries. I give a crap about America and American people. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for tuning in with me. Long live the true conservative movement and death, 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 death to feminism. A Napa guy knows the only way you'd give a freshly minted driver a brand new car is if he promises to never drive it. Instead, let him grind the gears and knock over the neighbor's mailbox in something a little more suited to his skill level. And with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, he can safely drive something that's nearly as old as he is. It's not perfect, but it's perfect for him. That's Napa know-how.